Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video, we're going to talk about the option type. Now, uh, we're still dealing with sequences and collections, and option kind of ties in in two ways here. First off, we've actually seen the option type before. When we were previously talking about the higher order methods that you can run on things, um, we ran into Sure, that'll work. We talked about the find method. Okay, so if we f call find, what find does is it goes through and it finds the first element that uh, satisfies a predicate. So in this case, let's say I want to find uh, the first element that is less than three. And of course, if you look, not seven, not four, not nine, it's the two. But the return of find is an option. Okay? And the option has a type parameter on here that says it is an option of int because this was a list of int. And the value that we get back isn't just the two, it says sum two. And it turns out there are two possibilities for options. Options can either be sum or, if we put a uh, minus sign in there, None. Okay. There are no elements that are less than negative three. Everything here is positive. And so when we do a find on this, we get none. And this perfectly illustrates why find has to return an option. If we were guaranteed that find was always going to uh, come across something that would satisfy the predicate, it could simply return that value. But that's not the case. Okay. It's possible for find to execute and for nothing in the sequence to match our predicate, in which case we have to return something that says that what we were looking for wasn't there. And the option type allows us to do that with a return value of none. So not only does this option type relate to um, this higher order method of find, it turns out that it also relates in that kind of the uh, standard way of dealing with option types in Scala is to treat the option as a sequence that either has zero elements or one element in it. Um, in that you can call the higher order functions that we're, uh, that we're used to, like filter and map and such things, you can call those on values that are option types. And that is kind of a, a standard way of, of doing this. You can also deal with these things using pattern matching. And we'll look at how we could do that um, in this video. So let's go back to our temperatures file that we looked at two videos ago. We wrote this. Um, you might recall that what this did is we had downloaded a uh, CSV, a comma separated value file from a website that has daily temperature data for San Antonio, Texas. And possibly you went through this exercise and downloaded it for some other location. Um, but this is a big file. It has 23,000 lines in it. And each one has information such as the day of the month, the day of the year, what month it is, a state ID, what year it is, how much precipitation fell that day, the average temperature, the high temperature, and the low temperature for that day. Um, and what I would like to do um, here is to utilize this, this information and um, you know print out uh, I guess print out something like the uh, average of the high and the low um, and compare that to the average temperature for the day, allowing the user to type in, um, how about we just go with a day of the year? We could go with a year, 
Uh, well, actually, I guess we will. We'll need a year and a day of the year. We could go with just the year and the day of the month and the month. Um, but then we're pulling out three values, and that will make our code a little bit longer. Uh, we'll we'll see. Um, okay. So how can we do this? Well, actually, I want to put an extra step in here. When we wrote this code previously, all we did was we pulled out the high temperature. Okay. And this high temperature um, will, we went through and we used split to split up the string on commas, and then we pulled out the seventh element here. And that's fine if all we want is high temperatures. But if I want to be able to go through and search this for other information, I would like to have those other things pulled out. And instead of just all being inside of a string, I would like to pull it out and store those multiple pieces. And given what we know right now, the only reasonable way that we have of storing multiple pieces that are potentially of different types is using a tuple. Um, So let's write a function, I'm calling it extract data, and it takes a line, which is a string, and it's going to give us back a tuple. Now, what do I want to get from this? Now, let's go ahead and let's do uh, day of the month, month, year. Now, all three of those are ints. Um, then let's also go with a uh, I'm actually going to convert the temperatures to doubles, even though in the file they all happen to be ints. The precipitation is the only thing that would have to be a double, but temperatures, because of the way we're going to work with them, um, doubles work well for them as well. So I am returning a six tuple here. And the idea is I want to do, actually, let's go ahead and let's I'm going to pull apart this uh, line, split it on the commas, and then what I want to return is the various pieces of, of information. Um, so first off is, I'm actually going to go with the US form of, of writing this where it's month, day, year. Um, the month is at parts sub, and remember, starts at 0, 1, 2. And then I want to convert that to an int. The day is in the first ver uh, element. The year is sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4. I'm going to go ahead and put in a line break here. Um, if this is sub 4, sub 5, sub 6 is the average temperature. I already have here pulling out the high temperature. And then I'll pull out the last value for the low temperature. Okay. And so now what I want to do down here in the code is instead of calling this highs, I'm just going to call it data because it'll be all the data that we're taking out of this. And I want to do a map using the extract data function. So extract data, once again, takes a string and returns to us the six tuple. So when I apply this function, remember the lines is just a whole bunch of strings. So data will be an array of six tuples. Um, and instead of printing out what we had before, I want to ask the user, uh, enter a date in
Okay. So I want to ask them for a date, and I'm telling them to type it in in month, day, year, separated by slashes. So date equals read line. I need to do a read line because this is not an int or a double. It is definitively a string. But now I want to put those values into um, some variables. And I can do that. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to use a little bit of pattern matching because that's something else that we are going to talk about. It turns out that you can do pattern matching on arrays and lists. It's another way of pulling out values from an array or list if you know how many values you are supposed to have. So I am making three variables. Remember, when you do a pattern, anything that starts with the lowercase letter is assumed to be a variable. So mstr is the month string, dstr is the day string, and ystr is the year string. And I want this to be equal to date dot split on the slash. So then our month is the m string converted over. Um, the we can copy that line, paste it twice more, get a day and a year. And then we can go and we can look for this. So what I want to do, I'll call it a single record. It's the, the one element that I, that I want from here is going to be equal to all the data and I want to find an element um, it's a single day now remember the day is in this tuple up here uh, and you can pull values out of tuples in you know either using a pattern assignment or using the underscore one underscore two underscore three I am going to go with the uh, underscore approach here uh, just for compactness though as I've argued before this is not necessarily the most readable format. So I want to find something where the where the month is equal to the uh, first element of the tuple and the second element of the tuple is equal to uh, um, let's just call this D. I felt like day was duplicating something uh, and indeed it is and d dot underscore three is equal to year. Okay. That's enough typing. One thing to note while you're programming, if you've been typing for a certain amount of time and you haven't tried running something, you are running the risk <laughs> that you're going to have lots of errors to fix. So it's nice to run every so often just to make certain that you don't have too many errors. Uh, not found, value L. Well, if you look up here, this says it's on line 10. So if we jump to line 10, the L was what I used earlier down here inside of our um, function literal. Here I've called it line. So I'll go ahead and make use the longer name run this again and we get an error uh, says null pointer exception now it printed out that and then it says it's having problems on line 21 well that's oh I understand um, this is a challenge that we have when I do this input here I lose the ability to type at the command line so that print isn't going to be printed to me how can I get around this 
well, I'm actually going to have to type in the stuff that we're searching for at the very end of this file. I don't know about you, but that feels um, a bit you know, less than ideal to me. So let's go for September 25th, 1985. To make this work. And indeed, there is a record for that day. Uh, what if we change this to September 35th of 1985? Of course, that date does not exist, and so we get a none. Um, but I wanted to be able to take the difference between, or to take the average of the high and low and compare it to the average temperature for the whole day. So I don't just want to print out the record. Instead, I want to do something, and if it was some, I want to do one thing, and if it was none, I would do the other. Now, in this particular case, because I'm doing very different things for the two, I'm actually going to do the pattern matching. So I'm going to take my record, and I'm going to match it against two different cases. The first case is uh, the case of sum. And here I can pass, I can say sum and put a pattern inside of here. Sum with a, so I could just say sum and have an underscore where I don't care what it's sum of as long as it's something. I could give it a name like R. But of course, the thing that we're matching here is itself a tuple. Now, I don't care about the month, the day, or the year because I know those values. But I do care about the average, the high, and the low. Print line. Uh, just noticed I have an underscore instead of a comma. Sure. Okay. If we run this, um, I forgot a close quotes, which causes problems. Compare not found AV. And up here, I have an extra underscore. OK. Notice it prints out you don't have a record for that day. Let's go back into the file. By the way, capital G jumps to the end of the file, in case you're wondering how I get down there so quickly we run this again. So the uh, average temperature for this day was 84, but the average of the high and the low is 83.5. Um, and so using this match, we can do different things depending upon uh, whether we were able to find something or whether we did not find something um, in that case. So I'll stop the video here. Uh, we'll come across option in a number of other usages as we go through the book. Uh, we can look at how we uh, would use it as a collection of zero or one elements with filter and map and the like. Um, but that's it for this. You should uh, go play with this. Um, if you're used to programming in other languages, you were probably not used to something like the option type. For example, if you came from a Java or a C or C++ environment, a function like find would return a null in situations where there wasn't anything to find. Um, but there are certain problems with doing that. And so in Scala, the standard is if you have a function that might have the possibility for returning nothing to you, you make it return an option. And so find is, is our first example of seeing that.